The Surface Book 2 15-inch is the bigger, more powerful version, the 13-inch model. Microsoft claims it's the most powerful Surface they've ever made. Is it true? Today I'll tell you my full review. Stay tuned. Okay, before we get started, if you haven't seen the review of the Surface Book 2 13-inch model, make sure you click the link to check that out first. Now, the 15-inch, of course, is just the bigger version of the Surface Book 2 13-inch, but there's actually a lot more going on, including a lot of nuanced detail, which we'll dive into next. Jumping to specifications, and the 15-inch model comes with a Core i7-8650U processor. That's an Intel 8th generation quad-core chip, and it's a really nice one, too. It has a turbo boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, but what makes it really interesting interesting, it has 20 watts of power for it. That versus the 15 watt found in the 13 inch version. That means this chip is going to run at a higher clock speed for longer durations than the 13 inch Surface Book 2. And that actually does show off in our benchmarks. Additionally, you get 16 gigs of RAM, 256, 512, or one terabyte of storage. And at least in the one terabyte version we're running here, it has a Samsung SSD, and we're getting over a thousand read and write speeds for that disk as well, which is a really welcome change from the previous Surface Book. Turning to the GPU, Microsoft put in an NVIDIA GTX 1060 with a full six gigabytes of video memory. It's an awesome card, and you'll see later in our benchmarks just how well it performs, but it'll outclass almost any laptop out there today. Turning to the display, you get a full 15 inch 3240 by 2160 pixel sense display. That ranks in at 260 pixels per inch. That's slightly below the 267 PPI of the Surface Book 2 13 inch, but really that's not noticeable at all. It is of course the same three by two aspect ratio as we all know from all Surface devices. Sitting above the display is Windows Hello with a five megapixel camera, IR sensor, and two microphones. It's actually a very good camera for web. It does about 30 frames per second at 1080p video. You can even do HDR photos. And on the rear of the display, of course, is that eight megapixel camera, which I think is actually underappreciated by a lot of people, but students who need to take a photo of a whiteboard will definitely appreciate it. Another trademark of Surface devices are the two front-facing speakers, so they're right here in the display cut out in the glass. They're excellent speakers as always. They are powered by Dolby, and I really appreciate the sound. They get loud, they're crisp, and since they fire right at your ears, you will always hear them. Tune to the keyboard, it looks a lot like all Surface Book keyboards, including the one on the original 13 inch, but they have tuned this a bit differently. They learned their lessons from Surface laptops, so travel is actually slightly shallower. It's 1.55 millimeters versus 1.6. Does that make a difference? No, actually I feel like this keyboard is much better than the original Surface Book. It's even slightly quieter and doesn't have as much a mushy feeling. I really enjoy typing on it. There's also a three-stage backlight so you can type whether it's dark or light. Looking at the trackpad, it's the same model found on all Surface Books, but it has been updated for 2017. It is hands down the best trackpad I have ever used. There's not much else to say about it. It's full precision, obviously. It's smooth glass. The clicking is excellent. And it's just a blast to use. Turn to ports, you get two USB 3.1 ports along with a full SD card slot. Microsoft has not removed that. Thankfully, photographers will definitely appreciate that. Turning to the right-hand side, you get a Surface Connect port, which is proprietary and magnetic. It can also be used to power a Surface Display Dock. New to this year is USB Type-C 3.1, replacing the Display Port from the last model. And while that's welcome, it is missing Thunderbolt 3. However, that just means you cannot use an external GPU with it or power multiple 4K displays. It does have enough juice, however, to power a 4K display at 60 hertz, or you can use it with USB Type-C accessories, including hubs, or you can use it with power delivery to charge the Surface Book 2 or power external devices. Turning to the tablet portion of the Surface Book 2, you do get a 3.5mm headset jack, which is welcomed. You also do have your power and volume controls on top. That has not changed either. The total package comes in at 4.2 pounds or 1,905 grams, which sounds heavier than it really is, but it feels great in the hand. And don't forget that tablet portion of the display pops off at a 1.8 pounds or 817 grams. It's exceptionally light. You're talking about a full quad core, a Core i7 PC and a tablet that weighs 1.8 pounds. 
Speaking of things Microsoft has not changed, we still have these full chrome hinge here, which is a trademark of Surface Book. Now, some people don't like the gap when it's closed, but we have to remember that the design here is essential for balancing this device when it's fully opened. Speaking of, they did reinforce the hinge, so it's a little bit more stiff this year. Sure, if you tap the screen, it will bounce, but I can say when using this in your lap and you're riding on a train, it does significantly bounce less than last year's model. Microsoft has also reworked the muscle wire mechanism for detaching the display. It's a bit more quiet this year and another welcome change. Turning to the Surface Pen, you can still use that with the Surface Book 2. And in fact, it supports 4,096 levels of pressure as well as tilt, which is really fantastic. That also matches the Surface Pro 2017 specifications, including its near zero latency effect. Now, the big caveat here is the pen is not included. And that's the same case with Surface Pro. So you're going to have to charge an extra $99 to your credit card if you want to use that pen. The benefit here is you get to pick the color you want. And Microsoft says they resunk that cost into to making the Surface Book a better device. Another unique feature of the Surface Book 2 15-inch that's not found in the 13-inch model is support for Xbox Wireless. That means you can use your favorite Elite controller or Xbox controller and connect up directly to it without using Bluetooth. That also means you get haptic feedback and it tells you something about how Microsoft is positioning this device. All right, so I know what you're thinking here. The Surface Book 2 15-inch seems just like a larger Surface Book. So what's the big deal? Well, this thing is an absolute juggernaut, both when it comes to power and performance as well as battery life. Turning to benchmarks, Geekbench 4.0 Surface Book 2 15-inch gets an amazing 5,036 on its single core and 14,237 on its multi-core. That, of course, beats the Surface Book 2 13-inch and actually every laptop I've pretty much ever tested, except maybe the Razer Blade Pro, which is a whole other level of laptop anyway. For graphics and OpenCL, Geekbench 4.0 gets 123,602. Again, it bests every single laptop that we have tested. Okay, so synthetic benchmarks are one thing. They're all super impressive, but what about real life? What does this thing actually do if you want to game on it? So playing Gears of War set to 1620 by 1080 resolution and medium graphics yielded 96 frames per second. Compare that to the 65 frames per second in a 13 inch model and just 47 frames per second for the Surface Book with performance base. In fact, I was able to game at 30 frames per second in Doom when set to high graphics. That's at the full native resolution of the Surface Book. All this segues nicely into fan, temperature, noise, and battery life. So when it comes to fans, there are two on this device. You have one in the tablet section for the processor and one for the GPU. And under load, yeah, it does get a little bit loud. We're talking about 52 decibels, which is not crazy. It is lower than most gaming laptops, but if you were going to game and use this thing at 100%, you're going to hear what I would describe as a whooshing noise. Luckily, it's not an annoying high-pitched fan, so you can definitely get used to it. If you Using gaming headphones, there's no issue. Now, if you're just using the Surface Book 2 15 inch as a normal laptop, you're browsing the web, you're watching videos, you're doing sort of app stuff, you'll never hear the fans. They're super quiet. The only time you're gonna really hear it if you're rendering video and really pushing that GPU. Now, when it comes to temperatures, the device gets a little bit warm, 106 degrees Fahrenheit on the bottom, that's about 41 degrees Celsius, but that is well within comfortable range. It just means you're gonna feel a little bit temperature, but never gets hot or uncomfortable. In fact, the whole device was like that, and I would describe the thermals as excellent for this device. And finally, drum roll please, battery life. So Microsoft claimed 17 hours. Now, in fairness to Microsoft, they are talking about a video loop test. And the reason they do that, a lot of these companies do that, is because these new processors are so dynamic that it is completely dependent on what you're doing and how much battery life you're going to get. That makes any battery life estimate very difficult and task dependent. Putting that in perspective though, I would easily say, if you're just using this as a laptop, eight hours minimum you'll probably get out of the Surface Book 2 15 inch. I often found myself pushing 10 hours. In fact, I would definitely be able to leave my charger home and take this out for me for today and not have a worry in the world. It really sips battery life. Now, if you're going to push that GPU and you want to game, there's a different story there. And this is true with all gaming laptops. I was playing Destiny 2 for about an hour and 15 minutes and the battery went from 99% to 57%. So that gives you about two and a half hours of straight gaming. That sounds bad, but anyone who's a gamer and uses a laptop knows actually that's a pretty good number and I'm actually very happy with it. Then again, most gamers are going to plug in their PC to use it, and that's the case here too. 
So far, so good. The Surface Book 2 is looking excellent, but I do have one issue here. It is Windows Mixed Reality, and that's a bit of a surprise, but I really feel like the Surface team really did not talk to the Windows Mixed Reality guys when making this device. For instance, in order to use a headset, you're going to use an HDMI to Type-C converter. Okay, that's fine, you can use that. But the USB-A plug is on the other side of the device, and you have to use a split cable to get around that. It's clumsy. There's also this other issue I experienced, which is the USB Type-C converter to HDMI gives a weird pulsing effect for the display. I'm not sure if it's a bug. I'm confident it could probably be fixed through software, but it feels different when I compare it to, say, another laptop like a Razer Blade Pro. All right, let's bring it all in. What do I think of the Surface Book 2 15-inch? I'm gonna call it, folks. This is the best laptop out there on the market today. Sure, you're gonna pay for it, but it is an outstanding experience. You're getting excellent battery life, excellent typing, excellent trackpad, a touchscreen, a tablet. You can ink on this. You can fully game on this thing. If you're a video producer, you can output video on it. If you're a scientist or an architect doing a lot of rendering, you'll have no issues with this. Now, sure, Windows Mixed Reality is not my favorite thing on there, but I think we'd all give that a little bit of a pass since it's kind of niche, although it doesn't speak too favorably to Microsoft's strategy here. Let's get back to that price. It starts at $2,499, and that's for 256 gigabytes of storage. I'm not really a fan of that model. In fact, I would go for the one terabyte version, but that comes in at a whopping $3,299. Now, put that in a little bit of perspective, that is $100 cheaper than a MacBook Pro at 15 inches with one terabyte as well. And here, at least you're getting a touchscreen and, well, usable port. So that's a big favor for Microsoft. Plus, it's a tablet and inks. That's also awesome. The question is, can you afford it and do you actually need all that it can do? Sure, it's nice to have this much power, but will you make use of it? And does that justify you spending that money? I could personally get by on a Surface laptop every day, but heck, it's nice to have this thing as well. In conclusion, Microsoft calls this the ultimate laptop. I think it's true. So that's my review, the Microsoft Surface Book 2 15-inch. Now remember, we also reviewed the 13-inch model, so check out that video in the link below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Aspect ratio, as we all know from all Surface devices. Did he really? <laughs> so I'm on the couch and I burped him. He's like, oh, I smelled that. I'm like, really? I'm like, that's gross.